everyone. Welcome to another episode of Off Air with Bimmy and Tool. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh see we got an email. Yay. Thank Cheers. You to, don't break it. Clink. <laughs> Thank you to Todd Studios for hooking us up with some mugs. Yeah. My I name is under everything. Yeah. My name too. Tools. Tools. I hate it when people call me Tools. <laughs> Just it's too late. They're gonna call you I'm that like, for the rest of your life. Tools, Tools. So <laughs> even I will call you Tools. Just so you Why know. Why do you T-U-S. call me Tools? Uh, it's okay. Anyways, well, anyhow, all right. So, um, thank you for all the love as usual. Mm-hmm. Thank you to all the people that uh, repost um, images from the show, repost mm-hmm. clips. Mm-hmm. We really, really appreciate it. You guys are the MVPs, and we say thank you. Yeah, and to all those who are subscribing as well, thank you very much. Sending links to your friends and all of that. Thank you very keep much. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Wow. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And yes, we did promise that we're going to give away tickets to some shows. Some guy on Twitter tried to say that we. Were scammers and I had to tackle him like who is a scammer? Where and how? Nonsense. We're giving away tickets and we'll make sure you don't win. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. She will actually make sure he doesn't win. She will. How are you gonna call me a scammer? Okay, no yeah, she's that. like that. All right, so we are gonna kick off with uh something very important. So mm-hmm. yes, we do laugh, we do joke around and everything, but at the same time it's also very important to give you guys some very, very useful information Mm -hmm. um so there's a trial in the uk has just concluded and basically it was um the trial of a policewoman Uh and this is what she was um convicted of she was actually found guilty she was convicted of um possession of child pornography um or not not distribution actually so this is what happened her sister had seen a video of a young child being molested and the sister sent it to her sister sent it to her this lady is a policewoman so it is actually in the uk if you receive a video or an image um, that sh- uh, of let's say it's an indecent image of a child um, mm-hmm. or like any kind of child pornography, you're actually supposed to report it to the law. Mm. Now she didn't because obviously she knew that if she reported it, her sister would get into trouble. Okay. Now what happened is this video ended up on this woman's phone, and even though she did not create the video, even though she didn't even watch it, mm. because WhatsApp, I know when you download WhatsApp, mm. um, the initial setting is that anything that comes through, it gets automatically Any downloaded. Media? Yeah. So if you're part of groups, if you're part of WhatsApp groups, I'm sure there are times when you know you've kind of just open the group and you just see like lots and lots of messages and then later on you find some images on your phone and you're like how did that get there and mm. they're from groups and that's because the setting on your phone is basically on you know download automatically mm. so maybe that's what she had uh, oh. but anyways even though she didn't you know she didn't re- um, create the video she didn't you know distribute it she was in trouble and she I think she ended up getting community service which is very very likely she was convicted of a crime she's lucky so that means um, she's on the sex offenders list oh she's on yeah, because she if you are found in possession of child pornography, you are also found in possession of um, an indecent image of a child. You can get in trouble. Now, this is for you if your parents are WhatsApp happy. Mm-hmm. My mom is WhatsApp everybody's, happy. Everybody's parents are WhatsApp happy. So my mom mm-hmm. is like, I have to say, you cannot. There was, there was one time she sent me a video of um, apparently this, this lady had caught her housemaid stealing. Mm-hmm. Um, the housemaid had stolen some jewelry. And um, she put it in, in her underwear. So the woman made the housemaid strip and she filmed her. That's not So my, they sent it to my mom and my mom's like, oh, look, you need to be careful with it. And I'm like, you cannot send that because you sending it to me. Guess what? That is actually um, distribution of an indecent image of a child. Mm-hmm. Anybody at the age of 18 any, is a disgusting Yeah, so child. you need to be very, very careful. So imagine... Everyone's trying to leave this country, let's be honest, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine that's American visa that you, you've been sweating for, sweating for, you finally get it. Uh-huh. You now get to America, you land at the airport, and for some odd reason, they're looking through your phone and they find that an image or a vid- an image or a video that somebody forwarded to you. But guess you what? No sense to me. Oh, that block you, you get, you get deported. So make sure the people that send you stuff, make sure they don't send you rubbish like that mm. and change your setting as well on on WhatsApp so you don't end up downloading yeah, you know, images or videos automatically and then you don't know what's on your phone. So yeah, just that's that's like a PSA. Okay. Yep. Good. Yep, yep, yep. So, up next. Yes. Now, let's this, get into the juicy stuff. Every year or so, there's this statistics that, that pops up um, about uh, basically uh, the paternity, the true paternity of most Nigerian uh, children. Kids. Somebody sent this to me and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. So, <laughs> it says this. Nigeria has the highest rate of paternity fraud in Africa and the second highest in the world. Three out of ten Nigerian men 
are not biological fathers of their children. Gang, gang, gang. So your sister might be your half sister. Your sister. Yeah. Mm. So we now discuss this. Um, so a lot of the times, a lot of the times, I think it's when. Uh, the couple are facing fertility issues Mm -hmm. because obviously in this country the way a lot of people think um, fertility issues only affect women ah here's the thing though I feel like and I feel uh, here's what happens I mean thinking about this now reminds me of that did you ever read that book The Secret Lives of Of, um, um, Mabasegi's Wives and everything where there was this last wife who couldn't you know she couldn't have a baby for anything they tried all sorts of things turns out and meanwhile the first two wives had children turns out those kids belonged to the driver or whoever, or some household staff, because they figured out at some point that Baba Segi could not, uh, you know, make babies, basically. Um, here's what I say. As so, the, the, when, once they start, uh, or rather, once they stop stigmatizing women or blaming women for all cases of infer- infertility, I think that there will be at least close to an end. I won't say it's going to stop forever, but mm. it's, it's, n- it's not going to be as rampant. I feel like, here's what happens. Man and woman get married. They try, they try, they try, they try, they try. At the end of the day, somehow, the woman clocks that this guy is probably been, you know, I don't want to use, say what I was I was going to say before. Before they say, before they say I'm insensitive. So, he's basically not producing any sperm that's going to make a baby anytime mm. soon. So, she quietly goes to get pregnant on the side and comes back with, yay, it's a miracle. We're pregnant. Everybody's clapping, and yeah, she's next thing you know, she's mama, bomboy, or bon, whatever. And then that's that. I just feel like people need to be very, very honest about infertility. Sometimes it's not, and Nollywood has a role to play in this too because they always portray anybody or any woman who finds it difficult to get pregnant as, oh, she must have been wayward back in school. No, no, uh, Boy, teach abortion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's also, that they, need, they really need to stop that nonsense because there are people, there are people who have never done anything yeah. sexually they're proper virgins till they get married and then it just so happens that infertility is a problem in their marriage yeah so please. and it, it, it's something that i think there's there's still um like you mentioned before there's still like a lot of stigma mm-hmm. and then see the people that always feel that when it comes to you know infertility it has to be the woman's fault mm. these are the people that still feel like um if a couple have you know like five daughters it's the woman it's actually the the man that determines the sex of the child Mm -hmm. okay so if a guy is married to this woman and he has like five daughters which for me i don't think there's anything wrong with that because girls are beautiful as well Mm -hmm. um and they're like oh she's only giving me daughters no you are the one that's actually in charge of that i know someone who you know wife had a bunch of girls you didn't say she had took it Ah, that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's your thing, please. Somebody actually did that face to me this weekend. Really? Yes. Yay! Yesterday, I was like, <laughs> okay. She was like, okay, okay, okay. Let me let me just behave myself. I was just like, this is. So, it was so funny. She was like, hmm. I was like, really, <laughs> really. Anyway, um, dude left his wife. Had she, they were cool. There was nothing wrong, but she just had a bunch of girls. He made up this excuse and then the marriage ended up going to you know impregnate like a much younger woman, married her and everything, and she gave birth to a girl. That's it. So good for him. <laughs> good for him. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, on on real. Um, so I think that's what happens. And then um, on the flip side, there might just small cheating, just small cheating, and a lot of you guys would be upset. Why? Why? Small cheating. I don't understand. Break it down. Say that again. Like, I feel like you're, you're, you're touching cheating. this thing from. Huh? Yeah, you're not supposed to be. No one's talking about infertility. Uh, no, I this, said on the flip side. I said so. The first, the first instance, I think a lot of it is, you know, maybe that's their not, fertility. That be the first instance. No, okay. the first instance is that they cheated. That's mm-hmm. that's the first. Why instance. you get small cheating? Look, small cheating. No, but that's the first instance. Okay. Why, like small cheating. why are that's you like making cheating. excuses of cheating, infertility cheating. for cheating? Go. So mm-hmm. when the guy cheats, the guy has cheated. Mm. But when the woman, when the woman has, eh, just someone else's child. How did you find these random small like, cheating? Come on. It's just small cheating. I know the funny thing. I, I remember. Okay, I know the funny thing. It's so funny the way guys behave react about cheating when a woman cheats. It's like oh and my the, god, the hey. world is coming to. You, so I, I remember know, that our I friend. Know, I know someone. Friend, I remember our friend. His girlfriend, you know, had stepped out on him, and he found out, and he was so distraught. Like, we, he, As anyone he, was, he was shaking. No, no, seriously, he was shaking no, like this. No, I was he like, came home to, down. Like, we're doing something somewhere. He came there. First of all, they're already. You know when you, you know you're having issues in a relationship and you fight with your partner and stuff like that. 
So they had already done their fight too, and she thought mm, that's the end of the fight. He it's not, it was not the end though. He came to where we were, pulled her aside as she was walking and continued to I was just like, okay. Then after the event, he sat down outside, outdoors with his guys till the morning, did not sleep because of small cheating. Then wait to me. Then the next day, he was on the phone with me. And I was just like, at the end of the day, I had to say, can you calm down? It's just, okay, so she cheated on you. It's very bad, but why are you over here acting like your toes are on fire? Like, would you calm down? Because the end of the world. Like, women, see, we get, you get cheated on, you're upset, you, you know, you might cry for a day or two or a week, and then you maybe maybe you break up with a person or whatever, and then, Brandy's or things. whatever. Now, a few months <laughs> after, you know, somebody else will toast to you for love again. But guys, ha! One girl broke my heart in primary two. <laughs> Never again. Never. Jezebel! Like, that's exactly. Like, ah, this like, wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you. Let me wait cheating. one second. You are still blaming women cheating on men. How? Because men are scum. How? Thank you. Your partner said. Women are, no, women are scum too. I'm too. The only thing that statistics tells Wait a says, second. Wait a second. The only thing that statistics tells mm-hmm. me is that women are as much. Trash wait a second. As men. Let, yeah, us look at, let us look at let us so look at let us look at a particular order. Wait, who do you think pushed women to be scum? No, ah, no, 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 if you are scum, you are scum. No one pushed you to be scum. Is, is are no. you scum? No, mm. if you are scum, you are scum. No, but somebody out there think you are scum. Still on this issue, <laughs> there are plenty, there are plenty. Still on this issue, oh my there's somebody that I know that. So that's okay. Okay. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Can you so just apparently come closer, come closer? That's okay. So apparently, mm-hmm. um, he's married. He, he was married, and he had messed around on his wife like a few times, and she always forgave and everything. Then the tables. Oh, flipped. that's sh- Shh. Don't oh. mention the names. Don't mention. Shh, do. So the tables are flipped. Now she cheated on him. And then next thing you know, this guy cannot think right. He cannot handle the anything. The whole thing is over. Everything because is over. Because of one small cheating. Because of small... But she, but she forgave his plenty cheating, though. Know. You know. But just one time. That's her decision. Nonsense. That's her, if she wants to forgive Women, don't forgive them. Don't yeah, forgive them. Don't, don't forgive them. Don't, don't forgive them. Don't forgive anybody that cheats. Men or female, like... Or, or if they if they do one, do your own back. How did Peace Square say it? If, I, if you do me, I do you. God no go vex. For every bass, they say, Step on the dance floor. God no go vex. Wait, wait. So is that the advice you want? That's what you can put out there. So that, though, it's just how you stand your back. We're not going to put it out. By the way, this, we are not, not sending it to your chest. Yes. Yeah? That's for every bass, there's a ghost. Or sometimes, or sometimes when there's a bass, you'd give them, pass, ghost, pass, ghost. Ghost, bass, ghost, bass. Then we have that Ojero Kansu. Okay. That's it. Okay, no, but, but no, wait, wait, hang on a second, hang on a second. But let's just be honest, right? You guys, if a girl cheated on you, you, it, you, it would, you, would, you would actually be heartbroken, right? Yes. And you would not. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That was a chorus of yes. Hang on a second. Let me let me ask this. Let me ask this. If you were if you were seriously dating yeah. and this girl cheated on you, would you be able to forgive? No. Like, why? Okay, well, if you no, cheated, no, no, no. you, no, you won't have to forgive I have a question, I have a question. So you and your girlfriend, you date a mm, couple of years, you guys get married, you guys are a couple of years into the marriage, and then it comes out that maybe in the first year of the relationship, when you guys are still dating, that she cheated on you, ah, but it was many years ago. Many and she has not done it again, no. I want to reveal. You are! Oh, <laughs> so for every boss, there's a boss, eh? There is. Oh. So when we oh, say I it... Is it that in red or anything? After how many years? Okay. But that's a long time ago. I was when you were cheating. So Who said no. that? What about you? What about you? I, I, I can't even remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. You were, you're married. You've been married for a few years. You find out that when you were dating your wife, like in the early years, she cheated on you. So Honestly it comes speaking, up. I feel like when you're married, things are different. Like you can't just... So leave. would you be able to forgive that? It will take time. It will take, time it will, it will take therapy. Fast, I don't mean pastor therapy. Fast, small I mean, like, cheating. Just fast, yeah, small cheating. Small cheating. It will take time. She picked you. It doesn't matter. Okay. I don't have this. She picked you. Yeah. Uh, what if, what if, doesn't mean you didn't have wait, another dick inside you. Exactly. Like, oh, wow. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, wow. That's, 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 what that's what we need. That's what we need therapy for. And what if, what if it's the guy that's beaten you at FIFA before? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. So he's not at me twice. You're a bitch. It's over. I don't know. No fucking way. That is fun. She 
she knew. She knew. She knew he beat me up. But I thought you guys always said that when guys that when guys cheat, it's you know it's it's just sex. Yeah. You know, but most of the time it is. So why do you think why do you think when women cheat, it's not just sex? Most people have told me their stories that they have to have like a bit of emotional connection. No shit. No, not all the time, man. Most of people I know. It's a lie. It's not. It's not. It's a lie. It's easy for me to say. It's not. A lot of moral women don't open. Just don't just open up their legs. A lot of moral women. Stop Amen. saying moral women. At the end of the day, we'll learn everybody. Okay, <laughs> let me just tell you now. Okay, okay? you don't moral have to have. Mo- See, I, I feel like people just create this whole thing to kind of mm. feel make guys feel better. Okay, she said that maybe she must have started catching feelings. What if she just wanted to fuck? She will fuck you now. But yeah. she's tired of you. We know that that's Sometimes it does happen. You know, it's not every day. Your love. Sometimes your father. Mm. Sometimes fly lies. <laughs> no, but it's I, I think okay, first of all, first of all, we actually we are joking, but we need We're to joking, we need to stress no, no, no. cheating cheating is wrong, cheating is bad. But I think the way that um you know the, the idea of women cheating has been it's like a scandal. Yes. No no it's like oh my gosh, she must have, you know, had feelings and everything. Sometimes it's just a case of oh he was hot, he and was attractive. Is, yes, I back. wanted to and that's it. It is what it is. So next topic mm-hmm. is pastors. Mm-hmm. Um, last week I had a guest on my show, Timmy Dakolo. I was, I was going to say somebody, but yeah. And everybody knows what happened with him and his wife. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, I have to say, um, I spoke to him. He, he has a new Christmas album out. That's what we really were supposed to talk about. Mm-hmm. But off air, we spoke about a lot of things. Um, I have to say, I, I told him that I'm very proud of him for standing by his wife because this is something that... Let's be honest, in this country, a lot of men would find difficult. A lot of men would find it very difficult to even hear that their their, their partner has been a victim of sexual assault. Mm-hmm. It's something that even if they heard it, they wouldn't want it to be public. Yeah. But he was he was okay with her, you know, making it public and going after the person that she, you know, accused. And um, he said something very interesting. I said, well, how is she now? And he said... Um, it's like a weight has been lifted off her shoulders that this is the freest she's ever been. Oh. And I had to say, you know, well done for that because let's be honest, not a lot of guys would actually be okay doing I'll that. be supportive. Yeah, they wouldn't be okay doing that. They'd probably be thinking, okay, my career is going to get affected. People are going to mm, look at me differently. Mm, mm. But he's very supportive. Now, what he told me, hey, hey, talkie. I don't know if you talk up. <laughs> I will push you. I don't know if you talk Come up. Come But I heard that that this is just a scratch on the surface i heard that Hmm. it's it's like it's a massive massive like cover-up i heard that there were lots of people lots of very very influential religious leaders that were sent to talk to him so this issue could be handled in a christian manner that's terrible and i heard that there was a there was somebody that um now how do i say this she ended up somebody ended up dying somebody ended up dying um and so it's that deep there's certain things that obviously because of you know i mean i don't want to get sued and shit um but there's certain things that i can't really go into details about but all i'll say is from what i heard this is literally we just scratched the surface and it's very very rampant it's very rampant there are lots of people out there there are lots of religious leaders out there that feel that they can get away with pretty much pretty murder. much anything especially in a country like nigeria where There's religion so- is such a uh, big deal i mean it's it's very shameful what you, it, they've been able to get away with really your your pastor is there on stage spraying money that's in soapy that's Ew. your pastor that guy now that one that's you guys will now say he's man of god man of god man of god how now really you're spraying like he's literally not even like you know the spring where they stone you with the money like take that's what he's doing so i just feel that this country it's actually very interesting so, somebody needs to do like a study on this because um i feel like you can get away with anything mm-hmm. if you just hide behind this religious leader thing yeah i heard that there's some churches that actually um that there's they, they are being used um for money laundering Oh, wow. I heard that basically some churches will... You know how some churches, they have, like, these big, big names? First of all, when you have, like, these big names, like your, you know, Kirk Franklin, all these different people, when they come to visit, in 90s, 98% of the time, it's not free. 
<laughs> just like if you're booking, you know, your Davidos, your um, Narabad, well, uh, all these people for mm-hmm. your shows, you have to pay them. So you have to pay these people. You have to pay them a fee. You have to pay like their travel costs and everything. Mm-hmm. So let's just say I'm trying to book. Let me use somebody up like Pastor John Wilson or something. Mm-hmm. And his fee is Why like. She had to just Why I said Wilson? John. It's just, it's just, it's just. And I want know. him to come and minister in my church. Mm-hmm. There's a good chance that I'm gonna have to pay him. Mm-hmm. Now, for the churches that are into money laundering, this is what happens. Pastor Wilson's fee is his. Um, you can call it if your investment is like I don't know. Maybe it's like fifty thousand dollars. I'm sure like a lot of them don't even collect that small amount. Mm-hmm. Um, so you say, okay, fine. I'm gonna give you five hundred thousand dollars. So you take that fifty thousand and then you send it back to me. So if you don't send it back because of you jail with their money. Ah. I don't know. I suppose that's a possibility. So yes, yeah, so, so a lot of a lot of churches are actually into money laundering and I cannot wait till somebody does like this massive expose. Mm. And for you, for the people that feel like, oh well he's a man of God, he made a mistake, you guys need to stop that bullshit. That is actually bullshit because I feel that if you are a man of God, you should know right from wrong. If you make a mistake, you need to own up to your mistake. Yep. You need to say, look, I did this. I was wrong for doing this. I will do better. You don't kind of just hide and just... And the, I don't understand how you can... Like, as a regular person, mm-hmm. if I do something, people are so quick to condemn and everything. But if you're like a man or a woman, it's really man of God. Really. Yeah. Let me tell you what. I think then you're, you're, you're like free because, oh, don't touch my anointed. Part of, the, anointed. Part of the big problem is this. You're, yeah, people are living in a society where everything has failed. You know, you don't have the basic amenities like you're supposed to. Nothing really works here. You have to, you are, you are your own local government. You have to provide your own water. You have to, you know, sometimes if, maybe sand fill your own roads, yes. generate your own electricity. The yep. system is Play your own transformer. a mess. Yeah, mm. everything is a mess. So the only thing they can hold, and people are just tired and just really, the only thing I hold on to is hope. Oh, God will do it. Well, so that's, what, that's how they hold on to uh, religion so tightly. The other day I tweeted, when, who would save Nigerian, no, who would save Nigerian parents from Nigerian pastors? As in, Come and see how people retweeting. People are just actually like I think like the older generation. They're just like hanging on to these men of God and these women of God at these religious houses, going from place to place. We pray so much. Yeah. There's a church or more on every street yep. or every two streets. And if prayers could can fix open a roads, church. we should have we should have the best roads. Anybody pray, pray, can pray, open pray, a pray, church. Pray, 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 pray. Pray. There's so many pastors that are scammers there. There's so many, you know, the ones that um, will come meet like a parent, like, oh, I saw something. Do you know a lot of the times, okay. What if you, parents like vision? No, no, if you, oh. if you, if you, with parents, what is their number one concern? Safety of their children. Mm-hmm. If you now come and say, ah, Mrs. Wilson, let's say Mrs. Wilson, Mrs. Wilson, your daughter, your daughter, uh, Fulayo, ah, she needs to pray. She needs to do this. She needs to. I. She's. She's going to fall into a wayward crowd. They will lead her astray. You need to pray. So then, Mrs. Wilson says, Ah, Pastor, please help me. Help me intercede, please, please. And then next, the Pastor, okay, you need to give me. We need to give this person money. We need to give that person money. We need to buy this. We need to, we need to, to buy that. So it's God bless you. So a seed. seed. You know the building co- committee of whatever they say or the building fund. Yes. And Every church has a bloody building fund. Somebody made a joke the other day, like, man, ever since he was small, they have been collecting building funds. Yes. He's now a grown man with children, and they're still collecting building funds, and they've not seen the building. So, so I, really, I, it's just, so I just feel that we mm-hmm. need to be more, we need to be more aware. Like, if somebody comes to me and says, oh, I had a dream, I saw this and everything, I might listen, Depends on depending on when you catch me, I might listen, but... The minute you say you need to give me, I'm like, no, I can't no, speak they to don't, God about no, it. No, they don't go, they don't do it outrightly like that. They will like, yeah, it's, it's, it's small by now. small by small. The next thing you know, be like, you know, you know, you have to take care of your father's house, that's the church. You know, sow a seed or one thing, one thing. Next thing you know, you are the one paying for the AC in the church or something. Like, let's let's talk about let's talk about the people that sacrifice everything for their pastors was it you that told me this story of somebody somebody that was attending this church he just got in a car and he ended up giving the car to the sewing, pastor yeah sewing the so seat. giving giving as a seat to the pastor as in the, the only car that he had and then his parents made him go and get the car back like are you mad <laughs> are you crazy so there's a lot of that and i know people that 
Okay, well, you, when it comes to like things like ties and offerings and everything, I think you know what? Do as your heart desires. Exactly. Do that. I'm not going to say do. I actually be, do believe that you should pay tithes. I'm not against that. Mm. Now, my issue is when you have people that maybe they're earning, I don't know, 500k a month, mm-hmm. and then they now end up giving 450k to the church. And they barely have enough to look after themselves, to look mm. after their families. Mm. And you end up sowing that seed straight to the pastor. Foolishly. There was, there was there was something, there was something, somebody sent me a clip. I saw a clip of this man uh, preaching and he was against um, the uh, prosperity gospel, which mm. is what mm. a lot of these pastors do. Oh, do this, you get rich, do that, you, you get rich and everything. And he said that he was basically, he's a pastor, he was preaching. He was basically saying that stop giving your money to these pastors that will end up buying a private jet that you will never be able to ride in if my pastor is buying is using money to buy a private jet god i will enter i will snap photo shoots i will, what about I will the be ones, like what about the ones who get who use the money to open up universities that are so expensive majority of people who attend their churches cannot even afford to send their school their See, kids but you're, for me i i think the lines get have, have been blurred for such a long time my understanding is if the church is collecting money from people to set up like um institutions like hospitals and everything really it should be m- most of it should be free yeah. most of it or should subsidized, be subsidized i think I, heavily subsidized he- heavily subsidized or free mm. you know there are lots of churches that are accepting dirty money of course there are lots of churches that accept Absolutely, dirty of money course, of course yeah of course. so there we go mm. if your church is on this table that we've broken sorry you should be able to ask questions. It is what yeah. it is. We have fan mail. Mm-hmm. All right, this is a bit long, so I'm going to try and summarize it. She goes, I'm 25 years. I just graduated from university. Congratulations. But I'm, congratulations. But I'm yet to defend my project. Bimmy and Tools, there are two things that have become a problem for me. Firstly, I'm a chubby girl, but people body shame a lot, especially in school. Like, it's really bad that I can't even go out and they make me feel really fat and, un- un- and unattractive. It weighs me down because this same people have some obvious flaws, but I just understand that no one is perfect. But they treat me differently. Maybe it's because of my upbringing. In Lagos, I hardly felt like that. But in Eboni, where I school, people would be like, you're too big or, or you look like a woman with children, ETC. So I don't know what else to do. And she goes, secondly... My relationship has always been a mess ever since I discovered myself. It's really bad now that my close friends are beginning to see me as an as an unattractive girl. Huh? People hardly speak to me in public, especially when I'm in a gathering, even when I haven't said or done anything. I feel like nobody finds me interesting and attractive. My family members are beginning to pressure me, like, so how far? I'm done with school and they're expecting to see me with someone. Even when I try to make it work, it still doesn't. Sometimes in a whole year, I wouldn't have a serious person to look at, to look at my direction felt so ugly a lot of times and it's really depressing i have my whole life ahead of me and i want to be a career woman but i feel i already feel inferior okay do you want to start or should i um first things first let's start with you saying that you're you're finished school you're going to defend your project so um if it's the environment because she says she doesn't feel that way when she's in lagos mm. so in that state she feels that way you're going to defend your project soon so you're going to eventually leave hopefully and come back to lagos if that's the place that is affecting your uh psyche or whatever sometimes some people need to leave where they are and mm. go somewhere else to feel better and live a better life so that's one so maybe you can do that two i feel that um whether no matter what size you are no matter what it is that you feel is your physical quote unquote disadvantage i feel like you should still first it comes from within yeah i feel like you shouldn't use the um attention from the opposite sex as to validate yourself exactly because then you start to do crazy things mm. so first of all you need to love yourself everybody and you need to you know just decide to love yourself uh flaws and all whatever it is you that is that um mm. you feel is not up to par um make sure that every time you go out you look nice you smell nice you do your best to make sure that you look decent mm-hmm. um and i think that you'd be fine if you are so also if you're worried about maybe weight you can also look into um eating mm-hmm. healthy mm-hmm. trying to incorporate a little exercise but at the end of the day you can exercise from now to tomorrow drop all the weight and still feel, feel that, that way, way. so yeah. i feel that you should definitely first of all try to look for how mm-hmm. to start to love yourself yeah yeah um, okay, so as somebody that is on the curvy side as well, I do mm-hmm. understand. And as somebody that's on the curvy side and in the public eye, oh my gosh, 
sometimes there were times when I would wake up and I'd be trending because somebody's like, oh, she should look like this, she should look like that. And at first it used to get to me, but the very, very important thing you need to remember is this, you need to learn how to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, it actually comes out. Mm -hmm. It comes out in your energy, it comes out in your vibes. And guess what? If you don't love yourself, you're not gonna find somebody that will love you. So it's very important for you to be confident in yourself. If you're looking and you can't find any physical attributes that you're like, that you're crazy about, then what about your personality? So there's certain people that I know that have amazing personalities and in a way it makes them much more attractive. But very, very important, just like Bimmy said, if you don't love yourself now, even if you're you go down to I don't know, Halle Berry size, you're still gonna have issues. So love yourself, love who you are, know that it's the in, in terms of the physical uh, the physical attributes of your body you can if you there's certain things that you can change there's certain things that you can't change but it's very important to appreciate who you are and that confidence is so so important when i got to a stage where i was super confident in myself i felt like a different human being i felt like completely different it took a while it took a while and it's going to take you a while as well but honestly you know how they that saying um, confidence is the sexiest thing you can wear. It mm -hmm. is so true. Mm -hmm. That's why I love Lizzo. Mm -hmm. Lizzo does not send. She is. She loves herself. She loves herself. I mean, she's always naked on Instagram. I'm like, why? <laughs> but she loves herself, and it's so. It's so. It's so inspiring mm -hmm. seeing that because everybody's always telling you you have to look a certain way, you've got to be a certain skin tone, you've got to be a certain um, size. And the fact that she is who she is, she completely loves herself, she embraces who she is, it's so inspirational. So um, very important actually, find people. Um, I actually got better when I started finding you know curvy role, role models. So um, Ashley Graham, there's so many people that are doing absolutely amazing things they're not like size zeros they're very curvy they have amazing confidence so back in the day i used to look at them and be like if they can do it if they have all this confidence i can too yeah. so look at some find yourself find some role models and then very important always just try and make sure you look nice yeah i do your, look nobody has it all some no. of the most beautiful people that you think are most terribly insecure have you know one thing or the other that's you know it's just not that great Nas himself said that well, back in the day that Beyonce's breath was stinking. So as beautiful as she was, we don't know whether he was telling the truth or whether he was lying she was or probably on some like, or whatever. I don't know. Plant, whatever the case may be. Based vegan, so it, does, you know. it doesn't even matter. I just feel like you should nobody nobody is a ten over ten from head mm. to toe. You can have a five face and three stomachs, it's okay. I like what Docas did this weekend when she was like she ever took a picture in a bikini and her stomach was all flat and nice and then she was like, Don't be deceived though, I'm just sucking Bele and it's angles and then she released her stomach and i was just like hey well on the same whatsapp group you know a babelli it's okay angles it's all right angles. it's Very okay important. so i feel like you should you know look like she said look um, um into uh, role models look if you don't know how to dress you can also try and see like how they put their themselves together how they coordinate their colors you know things like that just try to uh, and you, you need to start to look at yourself and uh, think about your posi your positive attributes. Yeah. Are you a funny person? Are you smart? Are you um, talented? Whatever it is. And, you know, just, yeah. I feel like, accept yourself, yeah. love yourself, build yeah. up your confidence. And whether or not, and guess what? You're yeah, over here saying that nobody serious has come your way or has tried to get your attention. There's some dude somewhere who is afraid to even talk to you. He likes you and he's just too scared. How many times have you heard, especially when you get in a relationship, one guy will now say, ah, I'd always liked you, but I, I did not have the I was too scared to come and talk to you. And, and, and then and when they say that, you're like, why are you telling me now? Yeah. If you if you were 25, and again, what would you tell your 25-year-old self? Stop playing so much and get to business. If I had started with me soccer shoes at 25, I wouldn't even talk to all of you here. I'll be so rich. <laughs> oh, I swear to God. Ah, I'll be can you, so can you hear this one? rich. Can you hear this one? Ah, especially when the dollar was not even doing yes. falafel. Oh. Are you joking? If I was 25, or if I could speak to my 25-year-old self, I'd, I'd probably say just, you don't have to go for every single party. <laughs> I didn't even party that much. I, partied, I, I, I pretty much them. just stayed indoors. I just felt like I should I could have used my time better. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely But then but then is. I I still had fun. Mm -hmm. I still had fun. So I think if I had been super, super serious 
and I got and it was a present day, I would probably have looked back and then wished that I had more fun. Mm-hmm. So I had fun. I had mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, that was good. Anyways, um, so hopefully that's helped you out. Um, just try and summarize all the different things that we said and make some bullet points. And um, there's some you know self help books mm-hmm. if you need that. Or once again, just look at just if if you very important, check who you're following on Instagram. Just make sure you have some role models that you value. Some people, some people that actually make you feel confident in yourself as well. So that's actually quite important. On that note, Mm -hmm. we will bid you farewell. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, Make sure you follow Off Air Show on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is Off Air underscore show mm-hmm. um instagram is off air show yes make sure you follow us if you have any questions if you want us to dissect and give advice on an issue mm-hmm. you can send us an email or you can dm us yeah yes you can um and did we offend you, anyone and if there's any topic that you want yeah. us to discuss uh feel free to do so did we offend anyone probably fake pastors oh, and their sheep. yes that pastor that pastor and that's men. doing soupy and men with your small cheats and men small cheating I like this. It's just small. You guys have balls, right? It's just small cheating. Be man. Wow. Be man. Tolerate the small cheating. Yeah, just small cheating. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> can do it, but you can't take it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so goodbye, everyone. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll be back next week. <laughs> All the guys in the studio are looking at us with evil eyes. <laughs> let's, let's sing the song. If you do me, I do you. God, God no knows that. Step on the dance floor. Why the dance floor? <laughs> it's not what they say. I know, but this, what you're talking about doesn't really matter. Okay. Me. I just felt like it was nice and everything. So every bastard is a boost. Every bastard is a boost. Bastard. 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 Bastard.